The Xbox 360 released in 2005, and the PlayStation 3 in 2006. New Dragon Ball Z fighting games kept being made for the PlayStation 2 until 2008, leaving the next generation consoles Dragon Ball Z list for a few years. Even the Game Boy Advance didn't get its own fighting game for another two years after its release. Today, we'll look at both with handheld and high definition Dragon Ball Z fighting games. <laughs> In June 2008, six months before the release of Infinite World on PlayStation 2, Dragon Ball Z Burst Limit released for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. It has 21 playable characters, a story mode following all of Dragon Ball Z, and a couple of extra what-if scenarios, featuring Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta and Super Saiyan 3 Broly. Burst Limit is fundamentally a new console version of the Budokai games, even being made by the same developer. Its gameplay is closer to Budokai 1 and 2 than 3, although it does feature all new drama pieces instead of the capsule system. You equip your character with drama pieces, which play out brief cinematic events mid-battle in an attempt to make the fights seem more like the anime series. They'll do things like dodge energy attacks or give a power boost. While they work well in the story fights, they tend to bog down versus matches, especially during online fights. Also, the parameters in which they activate can make them somewhat unreliable at times. Burst Limit got a lukewarm welcome, and it's clear that it was meant to cement an engine in place for future games. But, the Burst Limit series never continued. Along with Infinite World, it would also be the last Dragon Ball Z game published by Atari, as Namco Bandai got back full distribution rights. In November 2009, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 got Dragon Ball Raging Blast. Made by the same developers as Budokai Tenkaichi, the gameplay of Raging Blast is a descendant of that series. The stages are much larger than anything in the Budokai Tenkaichi games, it had faster flight movement, and players can now smash opponents into walls to stun them. Certain teammates can also pull off combination attacks for extra damage. It has 43 playable characters, and the story mode is called Dragon Battle Collection, allowing players to experience the original events of the anime. The game is much cleaner and smoother than the Tenkaichi series, though the controls have gotten arguably more complex by using the D-pad for extra special attacks. The actual fighting mechanics became simpler to make it a bit easier to get into, but at the cost of making the whole game feel somewhat shallower than the rest. While visually better, it's considered to be a drastic step down from Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Much like Burst Limit, Raging Blast was more of a way to get a foundation for an engine in place. Even so, Raging Blast got considerably lower ratings than Burst Limit, and it also did worse in sales. Which is odd to consider that Burst Limit never got a sequel. One year later, in November 2010, Dragon Ball Raging Blast 2 was released for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. It shot up to over 100 playable characters, including some all new ones never seen before in any Dragon Ball game. Raging Blast 2 doesn't really have a story mode, instead giving every character galaxy mode. It gives a series of stages that are more objective-based or set around themes, and completing them unlocks new stages for themselves and possibly other characters. Some of these resemble the story, but for the most part, it's more about having single-player objectives. Gameplay-wise, Raging Blast 2 is too similar to its predecessor. The only new additions are an easier chase option for pursuit attacks and the Raging Soul state where at full power you get increased strength and cheesy J-pop accompanying it. It retained the overly complex controls without enough new things added in. This is also the first Dragon Ball game to begin using Funimation's Dragon Ball Z Kai voice cast, resulting a few new voices for some of the characters. Every subsequent Dragon Ball game would follow suit. As a special included with the game, owners of Raging Blast 2 can watch the Dragon Ball Z movie Plan to Eradicate the Saiyans. As it was included on the disc, the main villain Hachiak was also made a playable character for the first time. Upon release, Raging Blast 2 was received less well than the first. Previous complaints were still not addressed, characters still felt very much the same to each other, and the engine still felt hollow when compared to the Tenkaichi games. It also did not sell as well as the first. October 2011 marked the release for Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi. The name was chosen based on a fan vote between one of five possibilities, and Ultimate Tenkaichi won out. As evidenced, its gameplay is similar to that of Raging Blast 1 and 2, 
but is altered to be closer to the Budokai Tenkaichi games. It was also made to be closer to the manga series than the anime, with character models given slight alterations to resemble their drawn counterparts. Creator effects were boosted to be more realistic, and every version has the option for the Japanese music and voices. The gameplay was designed to be closer to Budokai Tenkaichi, but still be accessible. This included being able to switch between long and short range fights faster, as denoted by the range symbol on the screen. It also has a few quick time events during certain combos, and several new camera angles were designed to give the battles a more cinematic look. The story mode covers all of Dragon Ball Z, plus a little bit of GT, and has the world free roaming aspect of Budokai 3 and Budokai Tenkaichi 2. The gameplay in the story mode is about what you would expect, with one major exception. For the first time, several key moments from the anime series were completely redrawn into high definition. These animations alone made playing through the story mode worth it. As a personal side note, this is what they should have done with all of Dragon Ball Kai. Ultimate Tenkaichi also includes a second story mode, called Hero Mode. In this, you get to create your own Saiyan character, complete with looks, voice, and fighting style. Your character follows his own new story, having to deal with the androids collecting the Dragon Balls and Omega Shenron killing almost everyone. As cool as the concept is, the whole mode is very brief, and the voice acting, no matter what voice you choose, is pretty atrocious. Ultimate Tenkaichi is slightly better than Raging Blast 2, and even did a bit better in the review aggregations. But as the franchise continued to be released up against the likes of Halo and Call of Duty, the sales dwindled even further for Ultimate Tenkaichi. Something drastically different would need to be done to reignite interest. Unfortunately, this meant that in October 2012, Dragon Ball Z for Kinect was released. It's only available on the Xbox 360, as it requires the Kinect camera to play. The entire game takes place in first-person view, and has you physically punching and kicking to make your character do the same. This basically meant flailing your arms to either punch or throw energy blasts. The only real game mode included is the story mode. It also included the 20-minute Bardock special, which is the first time the United States and Europe received this movie. Dragon Ball Z for Kinect has one cool thing going for it. The signature attacks. The 50 characters all have their own iconic attacks, and they are recreated very faithfully with the hand gestures required to use them. It sounds silly, but this may be the closest we'll ever get to being a Dragon Ball character. Needless to say, Dragon Ball Z for Kinect sucks. It was bombed by critics for being way too repetitive, even for a Kinect game, and being completely void of any substance. On the handheld front, Dragon Ball Z fighting games first appeared on the Game Boy Advance. Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu came out for the Game Boy Advance in November 2003, around the same time as Budokai 2. Taiketsu is single-handedly the worst Dragon Ball Z fighting game ever, and I say that with full knowledge of Dragon Ball Z for Kinect. Half a year later in 2004, Dragon Ball Z Super Sonic Warriors came out for the GBA. It was pretty cool, with the ability to swap out characters for group fights and link battles. It got a direct sequel in November 2005 with Super Sonic Warriors 2 for the Nintendo DS. It featured being able to launch special attacks with the touchscreen. It was alright, but not as good as the first. In April 2006, the PSP got Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai. It played similar to Budokai 3, and it was even made by the same developer, albeit much more limited. It didn't have as many characters, but the story revolved around the Fusion Reborn movie and had a survival mode. For a PSP game, it was pretty good. It got a direct sequel in March 2007 called Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai Another Road. It features a story mode about Future Trunks' fight against the androids in Majin Buu. The gameplay is nearly identical to Shin Budokai, but with the option of changing camera angles and several new attacks. The PSP got one more fighter three years later. In Fall 2010, Dragon Ball Z Tenkaichi Tag Team was released. It essentially plays like Budokai Tenkaichi 3, except for the biggest difference of having two-on-two -two fights. It also allowed ad hoc play for up to four players, and playing cooperatively with a friend against computer enemies was pretty cool. Japan got an exclusive fighter for the DS in February 2011, called Dragon Ball Kai Ultimate Butoden. It's meant to be a return to the Super Nintendo's Butoden series, I haven't played this one at all, so I can't say much about it other than it exists and we never got it. Of all the fighting games, my personal favorite ones are Budokai 3, Hyperdimension, and Super Butoden 2. 
The Dragon Ball Z franchise has released over 30 fighting games spanning 25 years. There are several that I couldn't even show you, such as the numerous arcade fighters or the Korean MMO. But even though it's known for fighting, there is one other genre that Dragon Ball Z has a copious amount of games in. Join us next time when Dragon Ball Z leaps away from fighting games and into the RPG.